nature of a substitute to the contempt report as offered by Mr. Comer of Kentucky. Without objection, the amendment is considered as read. I, I reserve, reserve a point, a of, point order. of order. I recognize myself for five minutes to explain the amendment. Great. And I reserve a point of order against the amendment. Thank you. As I said in my opening remarks today, the Department of Justice informed the committee that President Biden is asserting executive privilege over the audio recordings of his interviews with Special Counsel Herr. Until today, the White House had not asserted any privilege and, in fact, bragged that President Biden had not asserted executive privilege in the interest of transparency. My amendment simply amends the contempt report to reflect that the White House has now asserted a privilege regarding these recordings, though I believe this is a miscalculated and invalid assertion of executive privilege, my amendment would make the contempt report reflect today's developments from the Department of Justice and the White House and reflect the record as of today. Do any other members wish to speak on this amendment? If not, yes, Mr. Chairman, I'm chair recognizes Mr. Goldman. The, this is the part of the problem why you, you can't give the Republicans nice things. <laughs> because it's never enough. And it is true that the President Biden has not, uh, has not asserted executive privilege over the entire subpoena, effectively, that they responded to but for the audio, which is redundant because you have the information, there's no point in having the audio other than for political partisan purposes. And I understand how my colleagues get irritated because every time uh, you bring up something about President Biden, we bring up something about President Trump. But the reason we do is because in every single circumstance, what President Trump did was so egregious compared to what President Biden may or may not have done. Donald Trump asserted executive privilege over everything, over just about everything while he was president. It was a re reflex of his. And here you're complaining that Joe Biden finally asserted executive privilege over material that you cannot possibly enumerate a legitimate legislative purpose about. There is not one. You cannot, nobody can tell me, I know you say that what the intonation is, is why you need this, but I can assure you every court of law would tell you that the intonation of the voice as opposed to the words on the page is not a legitimate legislative purpose. Mr. So, Chairman, uh, would you yield to me, Mr. Chairman? Uh, I think it's, do, it's you, is it Mr. Goldman's time. time? Oh, I'm sorry. I thought I thought you had yielded, Mr. Goldman. No, that's that's okay. Um, so I, I I do think that the executive privilege is assertion is yet another reason why the contempt motion fails, uh, as it has previously, and that there has been. Uh, contempt proceedings have been called off when administrations, the last administration, has asserted executive privilege. If you would like to challenge the executive privilege, you may do so. You may go to court. But to hold the attorney general in contempt over something that the president has asserted executive privilege is completely illegal and improper. So in addition to the jurisdictional problem, you also have an executive privilege problem because you can't hold someone in contempt for something they have no control over, whether it's asserted executive privilege. You're welcome to go to court. You can go to court and challenge the assertion of executive privilege. That has happened before. Don McGahn has a, a very well-known case now that was litigated because he asserted ex uh, the president asserted executive privilege over him. But this is a legitimate use of executive privilege, and if you disagree, go to court. But this contempt hearing and this contempt motion has is completely nullified by the assertion of executive privilege. Would the gentleman yield? Yes, I yield to Mr. Raskin. Uh, and thank you again for your clarifying analysis of uh, the contempt citations. Uh, some of our colleagues uh, invoked the cases of Dan Scavino and Peter Navarro and Steve Bannon. We're talking about people in those cases who never produced a single document 
and never spent a minute before the committee. They completely blew off their subpoenas, which is why they were held in contempt by the Congress, and then they were uh, subjected to criminal prosecution for it. Now, you compare that to the case of the Attorney General of the United States, who produced precisely the document that was being sought, all 250 pages of it. Then there's a bait and switch, and then it said, oh, well, no, now we want the audio tape. He has a very reasonable invocation, I assume, of executive privilege, although I haven't looked at it. But in any event, not, not anything that you would base a criminal arrest upon, given that he overwhelmingly complied with the demands of the committee. And I think everybody's got to concede that. Um, and if you want to make the argument splitting hairs that, well, through some intonation or accent in the audio tape that a high crime and misdemeanor might emerge, then please make that argument. If somebody could even offer us a hypothetical of how we could ground this in the jurisdictional authority and the legitimate exercise of power of this committee, explain how the audio tape could reveal some intonation or accent that would produce the holy grail that you've been looking for for 18 or 19 months, which is a high crime or misdemeanor. And so far, nobody's uttered a peep about it. Thank you for yielding, Mr. Goldman. I yield.